Welcome to Disheveled Panels. I want to thank Knoxville's greatest comic shop, Snake Eyes Comics, for the opportunity to do a review of Wolverine Revenge. This comic was wrote by Jonathan Hickman with art by Greg Capullo. I was first exposed to Jonathan Hickman with his uh, Secret Warriors miniseries years ago, but I actually I fell in love with his writing during his uh, Fantastic Four run that he had in I believe like 2009 maybe. Greg Capullo, the first time I ever seen him was, you know, back in the 90s I was collecting the X-Men a crossover event uh, called the Executioner Song. And uh, that's where I discovered him, but I fell in love with his art style whenever him and Scott Snyder did their New 52 Batman run. I know he uh, really made a name for himself uh, being uh, like, you know, Spawn, but I'm not really a Spawn guy. I didn't really read Spawn and, uh, that much, and I don't believe I've ever even seen any of Greg's artwork in Spawn. This this comic takes place 10 days, I believe they say, after Android M fell. Magneto took his last breath and calls a big EMP. Wait, it's not really how that happened, is it? No, because that happened back, uh, guys, run out to your comic shops, preferably Snake Eye Comics, and see if they have a copy of the X-Men comic from 1992, 93, X-Men 25. Or you can always see if they have the Epic Collection Fatal Attractions, which just came out this year. Reading that, you kind of see where the story kind of came from. So that leads me to think, is this story set in 616? Did they retcon that at some point? I just don't know about because Magneto did cause an EMP, but it wasn't to his death. He actually caused it. So that was a little weird. And also, I wish there were like editorial notes under that write up. Like maybe throw something like, you know, um, as seen or as read in X Men 25, volume, whichever volume that was. I guess it was technically volume two, but volume one because I don't know. It gets weird. But hey, guys, in the 90s, we didn't have like, 17 different X-Men number ones. Oh wait, let me take that back. Yeah, we did have a bunch of X-Men number ones, but it was all the same X-Men number one. Now we've established this takes place in the 90s, 93. By the way, this is going to have some spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, uh, let me just put it this way. Art, very, very good. Writing, excellent. Even though it doesn't really have that Jonathan Hitman style to it, but of course we are just one issue in. So the comic is definitely a buy. Let me just say another thing about the art. Greg's Nick Fury. That is an awesome Nick Fury. Pretty much everything that Greg drew in this whole comic is just awesome. It's like, I don't know the complete history of this miniseries. I don't know if um, he just kind of said, this is who I want to draw. Let's make it happen. Or if, like, Jonathan Hitman said, here, I have this story, let's, uh, you know, let's get Greg on it, you know, I don't know. I don't know how that happened, how that turned out, you know. He, he was, he was knocking this out of the park. Couple of things that were just kind of making me go, hmm. Uh, for one, we, we get Bucky, but Bucky, you know, kind of the Winter Soldier's Bucky, right? You know, that's the Bucky we get, and I thought that was like 2000s whenever, whenever we found the Bucky, like, you know, the Winter Soldier. So that, 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 that was kind of weird to me. Also, Colossus rocking that beard. Yeah, that beard. So in 92, he actually looked like, like this. So, another thing we got to keep in mind, you know, th this could be not 616, but it also could be mastermind maybe it's his telepathic illusions that are causing all this maybe this is the current day and something's going on i don't know uh what do you guys think let me know down in the comments uh what you think a, a couple other scenes that i just loved like seeing uh captain america doing his shield ski down a snowy mountain that was epic just absolutely loved that my favorite panel of the whole comic was this one 
with destroyed Wolverine in the in the claws. By the way, I did have the red band version of this. So I don't know if maybe that panel is even in the other version. This definitely has me wanting to read the whole series. This issue was a lot of fun and gorgeous. Guys, thanks for watching the video. You know, the last couple years we've been talking about throwing comics into this and you know, here they are. Uh, at one point I thought I was going to be with um, producer Jamie. Uh, we had the idea of the bloody panels that did not pan out but uh i am glad to be doing it let me know what you guys think do you like that i'm gonna be doing some uh, comics on this uh on the channel let me know down in the comments and as always stay spooky and keep it disheveled